you to join the new unit, John, as deputy director. That's a compliment, Professor Kostelitz. Thank you. <laughs> Not so much a compliment as selecting the right man for the job. <laughs> One of my intentions for the new unit is to form a team to isolate and identify the endogenous opiate that morphine imitates. Oh, the isolation of the brain's natural morphine. Yes. But suppose it doesn't exist. What is science, if not the search for something that may not exist? It's a theory. Soundly based. From the way morphine acts, it must respond to a specific receptor. And why should the body have a specific receptor for morphine? When nature couldn't possibly predict man producing it from poppies? Morphine must imitate a natural chemical already in the brain. This chemical must have the same effects as morphine, providing pain relief, highs of pleasure, ecstasy, and is probably non-addictive. Perhaps we could unlock the whole key to addiction. pig brain soup and disturbing my class making what if you didn't have total confidence in me then why give me the job I have confidence in you you know that my doubts always lay in the limited resources you are working with then increase my funding <laughs> with a magic wand you started all this ten years ago everyone in the field knows Hans Kostelitz why are you of all people blocking my way I am NOT but you are one man working on one project in a department. There are other people, Mr. Hughes. American universities are going to beat us to it. And if we're talking about narcotics, we need to talk about opiate receptors. Carol, opiate receptors. The molecular keyholes on nerve cells that are activated by narcotics. Good. And why are they important? the key to the addiction. And if we can discover a natural narcotic, if it exists, then perhaps we could design a drug to fit these keyholes that's not addictive. Because nature wouldn't produce something in the brain that was addictive. Exactly. And there lies the path to fame, claim, and possibly fortune. The race is on. The American universities have huge funds to combat drug abuse. They also have massive problems of addiction with the soldiers returning from Vietnam. We have what we have and no more. You do have one advantage over them, though. What's that? Nobody knows you're in the race. 
I'd sooner have the funding. This is very important work. I shouldn't be banished to this place. We're all doing very important work, and we have a right to confine your brain bashing to this place if you're disturbing the entire building. Steady on, John. You all right there, John? Yes, I'm quite all right. Thank you. See you at the green. Hey. to attend the Snyder's Boston Conference next May, sir? Yeah, you have some more? Yep. Yeah. Avram Goldstein, Candace Pert, David Mayer, Hans Kosterlitz, and John Hughes. John Hughes? Where's he from? Uh, Aberdeen. He's a colleague of Professor Kosterlitz. John Hughes. Never heard of him. Um, you haven't thrown any samples away yet, have you? No, but you did tell me to get rid of the ones you Yeah, I did, I did, but I'm glad you didn't. I, I want to test them again. Shall I just leave it all, then? Please. Anything else? Uh, not at the moment. Thank you. Hands! Hands! Come and see! Come and see! You! You two! What is going on? We've been trying for a long time to isolate what we believe is an endogenous opiate. <laughs> an endogenous opiate is a natural morphine that we actually produce inside the brain. Hence, the pig brain soup. 
These samples are a couple of months old. I'd left them in the refrigerator. The cold must have acted as a preliminary purifier. The electric current sets up a regular pattern of contractions in the ileum. And then, if morphine were added, the contractions would decrease to a degree directly corresponding to its painkilling potency in humans. And the stuff in the brain soup acts the same as morphine, and it quells the contractions in exactly the same way. You see how they've decreased? Yes, I see. But now for the real test. If the substance is the brain's own natural morphine, it should act the same as the drug morphine. So, we introduce naloxone, which reverses the effect of the drug morphine. And if this is the natural morphine, the spasms will increase again? Exactly. You see? No, not really. The change is registered. It's very small because we are not dealing with a pure product. But it's in there somewhere. Well, it's very interesting, gentlemen. It really is. But I, too, have work to do. <laughs> Secrecy is very important. We've got the Americans breathing down our necks. You have to face the possibility that it may be a contaminant. You must try and work in as near to sterile conditions as you can. And that decrepit excuse for a lab? Conditions could be better. But wear surgical gloves. And as a further precaution against contamination, we must tell everybody that no narcotics in any form are to come close to the lab. And make sure the technicians wash the equipment thoroughly. Right, I'll do it. And if the endogenous opiate's there, we'll find it. We now need a pure sample and a breakdown of whatever it is. To Substance X? To Substance X. I had a nightmare it could be a contaminant. I thought you and Costellitz would get through that. But, but what if its action isn't biologically natural? What if it's artifact? Surely not. Why not? I mean, it could be something I've made by extracting it with acetone. It could be a, a chemical breakdown in the brain caused by death. You've got to go on, John. You'll isolate it. We're all sure you will. All well, the Americans, if they know how far on we are with it. It'll be interesting to hear if Costellitz has found out anything while he's in Mexico. Hmm. Yes, it will. He'll be back in a couple of days. Hans? Hans? What did you tell them? No good morning, Professor. How was Mexico? Did you have a good trip? I'm sorry. It's just there have been rather a lot of calls. From who? Well, the United States, mainly. Some from the continent. They say that you made an announcement at the conference. Are they just bluffing, trying to find out how far on we are? I did make an announcement. I said I have something interesting to tell you. John Hughes has stayed in Aberdeen because we have some preliminary evidence that a natural substance made from pig brains has morphine-like activities when tested. Nothing more? Nothing more. Hence, all our competitors were there. Well, I mean, now they know it exists, they're gonna pour all their resources into it. Goldstein, Snyder, not to mention the American drug companies. Uh, that's something I wanted to discuss with you. I think we should contact a British-based drug company. No, I don't want to do that. This is my project. Now, we spoke to a company last summer, it fell through. We just wasted time. We'll see. I think it's a good time for sponsorship. Even if it's just a matter of them supplying us with pig brain extract. Hans, how could you tell them? John, science is for the benefit of everybody. We have a moral obligation to exchange information. They're looking forward to hearing your paper in Boston. I'll bet they are. I was at Yale for two years. I know how they operate. 
It's not like here, Hans. If they don't get results quickly, they lose their funding. Now, the competition is very fierce, and you've just given them a two-year bonus to catch up with us. But we have to go public sometime. Last week, now, next week. At least they know who you are. Ah, uh, cheer up, John. You're leading the race. So, our friends in Scotland have found a substance in pigs' brains which has a morphine-like quality. Where is the evidence? Where is the scientific paper laying claim to their discovery? There isn't one, so the race is still on. Better still, they have saved us a lot of time and effort. By announcing their discovery, we can still win. Is everything all right? Not good news. Sorry. The Brain Research Journal has rejected your article on Substance X. Pain may be necessary, even good. <laughs> so why should nature provide a built-in mechanism to relieve it? This is ridiculous. But you have to satisfy their objections before you publish your paper. They're very critical of your methods and procedures, I'm afraid. It could take months to satisfy them. It could take forever, and in the meantime, someone else may claim the credit for the discovery. It's possible. Press on. Stay in front of the pack. Mr. Morgan from Reckitt and Coleman to see you, John. Oh, blast. Barry Morgan. The last time a drugs company expressed interest in my project, they wasted my time. Let's hope we don't. Professor Costlet thinks we might be able to help you. Oh, you know what I need, do you? Pig brain extract. I think we can supply you with about ten times the amount you can process on your own up here. No more trips to the slaughterhouse. We are trying to get a pure sample of substance X out of that. Yes. Pig brain extract in return for what? Share of the patent. You release the results as you think fit. We'll keep you well supplied with brain extract. I hear the Americans are snapping at your heels. In two months' time, there is a meeting of the International Narcotics Research Club at Airdy House in Virginia. Goldstein, Snyder, you heard of them? Yes, brilliant men. Exactly. Well, they're both presenting papers on enkephalin. Well, I haven't heard of that. It's our substance X. It's a loose term for in the head. We didn't want to give it a name that implied it had anything to do with known narcotics. Enkephalin, right. We'll need a better commercial name. But th that's your field. Marketing division. This is going to revolutionise the painkilling market. Aspirin too weak to treat migraine, arthritis, etc. And the opiates which are addictive. And nature had the answer all along. A natural morphine. Any idea at all what the chemical breakdown is? Do you know what a peptide is? A chain of amino acids. But what's in the chain? Before I can find that out, I have to purify the samples enough for the biochemists. And before I can do that, I had to invent this machine. Yeah, I thought it looked rather Heath Robinson. Well? Your samples weren't pure enough. a smile around here. Something for everyone to smile about. The samples are pure enough to get a partial result. Well? <laughs> Glycine, phenylalanine, methionine and tyrosine. An estimated ratio of three glycine, one phenylalanine, one methionine, one tyrosine the probability of tryptophan or a derivative of unknown amounts. Great news, John. Well, um, I've still got a long way to go, but give me something to talk about in America. <laughs> Glycine, phenylalanine, methionine, tyrosine. Four positive amino acids, but we don't know in which order they appear, and the list is still incomplete. Why are the other amino acids proving so elusive? I don't know. 
The fifth one appears to be methionine, but occasionally leucine appears. Suppose we're dealing with an amino acid that hasn't been discovered before. Oh, wow. Wow, indeed, but I don't think so. I think there could be up to ten amino acids in the formula. And your hypothesis? Tyrosine, glycine, glycine, phenylalanine, methionine, glycine, phenylalanine, and tryptophan. A simple composition for such a potent peptide. Simple, relatively speaking. But our basic problem is, if the modified tryptophan is the missing factor, we'll never find it because we keep destroying it with our testing methods. There's an alternative test. What's that? Mass spectrometry. And we've tried that. It doesn't work. Well, what have we got to lose by trying again? We're up against a brick wall here. At least we're using proven methods. Mass spectrometry is no more than mass speculation. All right, I understand your mistrust, but as Ian says, what have we got to lose? How long is it going to take to unravel the formula at this rate? Uh, six months. Or nine. Be flexible in your thinking, John. Barry is suggesting asking Howard Morris to help. He's a very respected man. Who's Howard Morris? He's our man in Cambridge. He comes up with a formula. We manufacture a synthetic product based on his findings. You give it the ileum test. If it responds accordingly, then we've cracked it. If not, you continue with the protein analysis. It'd be a tragedy if the Americans cracked the formula using mass spec. Let's try it. Hello, John Hughes. Oh, Ian, it's you. Golf. Yeah, I'll let you know. John! It's Howard Morris. Hello. Yes. Yeah. You've got it. <laughs> Two chains. Yeah, go, yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> How soon can you synthesize the formula and get it here? Two weeks? Yeah, I know, I know. I know, I know we've been doing it for two years. It's just that we're very close. Yeah, all right. Thanks. Well, this may well be it. Yeah. Come on, John! They had the same problem as we have, identifying the fifth amino acid. Just like us, they got either methionine or leucine. The answer might just be that it isn't a ten acid chain. It's two fives. Oh, that makes so much sense. Two chains, one masking the other. Yet to be proven. A but. How many buts have we had over the last few years? <laughs> OK, so I won't open the champagne, but I might as well buy the bottle. <laughs> Enkephalin. Enkephalin. Getting to know you. Add the naloxone. Add the naloxone. Yeah, all right. I'll phone Howard Morris in the morning and acknowledge his contribution. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, good, okay. Yeah, thanks. Right. Talk to you soon. Our friends in Scotland have won. The race is over. <clears throat> Long live the race. How do you mean? This is only the beginning. Their encaphalin is now a scientific fact. Now we have to see who can exploit the discovery to its maximum extent. Lucille? Yeah, uh, I'd like a bottle of the best brandy sent to Hans Kosterlitz and John Hughes at Marischal College, Aberdeen University, Scotland. Yeah? Uh, Hughes. His name is... John Hughes.